All right, guys, part two of 2.3 is going to talk about the remainder theorem and the rational zeros test. Okay, so what we're going to be doing <clears throat> is you're going to find all the zeros, whether they're real, imaginary, if they're nice, pretty whole numbers, if they're irrational numbers, those sorts of a thing. And you're not always going to be able to factor right from the beginning. You're going to have to do what's the synthetic division. You're going to have to use the rational zero test, and I'll show you in a second. But when you talk about the factor theorem, just so you understand what these words mean. Factor theorem is, hey, is this binomial a factor of the polynomial given? All right? So what that means is you're going to show here that x minus 2 and x plus 3 are factors of this polynomial. Well, how many answers should you get for this polynomial? Four, because the highest exponent is four. So in order to show that x minus 2 is a factor and x plus 3 is a factor, we're going to use synthetic division. So we did synthetic division last week. What did we do with synthetic division? We're going to set x minus 2 equals 0. <clears throat> so x is what here? 2. So I'm going to put 2 in the corner. I'm going to use synthetic division. So I have 2, 7, negative 4, negative 27, and negative 18. Yeah? Do I have any gaps? Do I have any places I need to account for? Anything like that? All right, so I have x to the fourth, x to the third, x to the second, x to the first, and my constant. Everything's accounted for. So we bring down our first factor, and we multiply to the corner. 2 times 2 is... 4, and then we add down. 7 plus 4 is 11. <clears throat> 11 times 2 is 22, and then add down what's negative 4 and 22. 18, good. 18 times 2 is 36, then we add down what's negative 27 and 36. 9, all right, 9 times 2 is 18, and negative 18 and positive 18, 0, okay? Now we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to show that x plus 3 is a factor. So what am I going to put in the corner? Negative 3. When I set this equal to 0, I get negative 3. God bless you. Again, same coefficients. 2, 7, negative 4, negative 27, <clears throat> excuse me, and negative 18. Bring down your first number. Multiply to the corner. What's 2 times negative 3? Good. Negative 6. What's 7 and negative 6? 1. 1 times negative 3? Yep. Negative 4, negative 3. Negative 7, negative 7, and negative 3. 21, negative 7 and 21, negative 6, negative 6 times negative 3, 18, negative 18 and positive 18, 0. How did you guys just show me, algebraically, that both of these binomials, x minus 2 <clears throat> and x plus 3, are factors? Because the remainder is what? 0. That's a very, very, very important concept, guys. So here you would say, okay, I just proved to you. It says show. That's how you do it. You can show that something is a factor if you use synthetic division and your remainder is zero. So in the blue, if I asked you to write the resulting polynomial, those are the coefficients of your resulting polynomial. So the two, what, <clears throat> excuse me, what x1 is represented first? This is x to the what? Third squared x constant remainder. So this would be 2x cubed plus 11x squared plus 18x plus 9, right? What about in red? What's this resulting polynomial? 2x cubed plus x squared minus 7x minus 6. You guys agree with me? Okay, good. All right, so <clears throat> we're going to use that. We're going to use synthetic division to find all of the zeros. You'll see what I mean in a second here. <clears throat> what I just showed you is what this says. When the remainder is zero, then the binomial is a factor. If it's not, if the remainder is not zero, then it's not a factor. That's also telling you that that's an intercept where it crosses the x-axis. So now we're going to talk about the rational zero test. P over Q is what we're going to refer to it as. P over Q. All right, P over Q. Now, Ms. Chris Weiser's advanced and AP are going to do problems that are a little more advanced than we're going to do. To find the possible rational zeros, 
you take the factors of the constant term, so it's the last over factors of the leading coefficient first. I'll explain this in a second. <clears throat> you take the last number, put it over the first number. In our case, all right, in our case, this number is always going to be one. So the only thing we really have to worry about is the last number. Is Chris Weiser, is, her kids are going to do where the first and the last are both numbers greater than one. So it's going to deal with a lot of fractions and stuff. We're not going to get that. We are going to do P over Q. Rational zeros test will also be referred to as P over Q. We're going to do it where <clears throat> the first term is always one. Your leading coefficient is always one. Let me show you. Find the rational zeros. All right, <clears throat> finding the rational zeros, P over Q, rational zeros test, all means the same thing. How many answers should I have here, guys? Three. three. All right, I know I should have three answers. So we're going to factor. We're just going to solve. What do you do when you have four terms? Group it. Okay, let's group. What can I take out of the first set of parentheses? X squared. I'm left with X plus 8. Good. What can I take out of the second? Hmm, does this group? No, so then we can't use grouping. So this is where our P over Q comes in. We're going to do four or five examples of this. First thing you're going to do is you're going to look at the last term. Don't worry about the sign. It's 20. So we're going to list out all the factors of 20. What times what equals 20? I have 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20, correct? Yes? Now, I need combinations. <clears throat> I need combinations plus and minus. So at the beginning, we're always going to put a plus or a minus here. It could be a positive 1. It could be a negative 1. It could be a positive 2. It could be a negative 2. It could be a positive 4, negative 4. So you're all, don't worry that the last number is negative. Just list out all the factors and then put a plus minus in the front. Now, what we're going to do is synthetic division. And you're going to use synthetic division until you get a remainder of what? zero. Now, some of you are like, what? If you want to jump around and say, okay, I'm going to start with positive two, then try negative five, then go to positive four. You can do that. I would not. I would always start with one. If one doesn't work, go to negative one, then go to two, then negative two. I'd stay in order so you don't get yourself confused. But we're just going to start with positive one. I'm going to see if I use synthetic division and I use positive one. See if one works. If it does, that means one is a zero. One is where the x, <clears throat> the graph crosses the x-axis. So I'm going to write out 1, 8, 11, and negative 20. Yeah? You guys good? All right, this can be a tad tedious. Just pay attention to what you're doing. Focus. So bring down your 1. 1 times 1 is? 8 plus 1 is? 9. 9 times 1 is? 9. 11 plus 9 is? 20. What's 20 times 1? What's negative 20 and positive 20? Is this a factor? Yeah. Yes. So you just showed me right here. Oh, x equals 1. How many answers should I have? Three. I found one of them already. If I came out with a remainder that was anything else than 0, I would say, oh, 1 doesn't work. Then I would try negative 1. But you will eventually find something that works. I'm not going to give you something where you have to do synthetic division 12 times before it works. Like, unless you, you're jumping all around. That's on you. But you might have to do synthetic division two or three times. Nothing major. But what do you have left over here? How would I write this resulting polynomial? Oh, x. x squared plus 9x plus, 9 x plus 20 equals 0. So now you say, okay, I already found one of the answers. I have to find two more. You can jump into synthetic division again. You can list out all the factors of 20, plus and minus, 1, 2, 4, 5, 10. But I would always check at this stage, after synthetic division worked once, I would say, hmm, does this factor? Does it? Are there factors of 20 that multiply to give you 20 but add to give you 9? What? 4 and 5? So what are your two other zeros? What kind of four, what kind of five? Negative four and negative five. So there you just found all the zeros. 
So looking at this list, guys, if somebody started with negative 4 in your synthetic division, would you have gotten a remainder of 0? Mm -hmm. Yes. If you just randomly chose negative 5 to begin with, would you have gotten a 0? Yes. But I really think it's a good idea to just start with 1. If that doesn't work, go to negative 1. Just go down the list in order. It'll make your life a lot easier. All right, four terms. What should we try and do first? Group. Maybe you happen upon one that actually works. This one doesn't, so we'll just pretend. So what is the, what, what's the process here? I look at the last term. What are the factors of six? One, two, three, and six, right? Account for plus and minus. I'm going to just start with one. I need to find <clears throat> my remainder of zero, and then I know it's a factor. So I'm going to write out the coefficients. One, two, negative five, and negative six. What is, go to the corner, what's one times one? Two plus one is three. Three times one is negative five and three is negative two. Negative two and one is, is this gonna be zero? Okay, go to the next one then. One doesn't work, so let's try negative one. One, two, negative five, negative six. Bring down your 1. 1 times negative 1, negative 1. 2 and negative 1. 1 times negative 1, <clears throat> negative 1, yeah? What's negative 5 and negative 1? Negative 6. What's negative 6 times negative 1? 6. What's negative 6 and 6? What you guys just prove? Negative 1 works. X equals negative 1. Guys, make sure once you get a remainder of 0, you, you say, hey, look, Mrs. Meadows, X equals something. Don't just leave it to where I have to find where you have a check mark. You have to answer what the zeros are. So I have one of the zeros. How many are left that I have to find? Two more, all right? Here's my resulting polynomial. Write it out for me. What is it? X squared plus X equals perfect. If you want to do synthetic division again, feel free. I'm going to try and factor it. And there are factors of negative 6 that multiply to give me negative 6, but add to give me 1. Yeah. Plus 3 minus 2. Perfect. So what are my other two zeros, guys? X equals negative 3, and X equals positive 2. Is this super hard? No. <clears throat> Is it a little tedious at times? Yes. All right, find the remaining, <clears throat> find the rational zeros. Whoa, this is a big one. How many zeros do I have? I have four total. So I have to find all four. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at the last term. Plus minus 12. What makes 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Okay. I'm going to start with one. If you guys would like to start another way, feel free. Hopefully we arrive at the same answer. Answer. I'm gonna say one, and then my coefficients are one, negative four, <clears throat> negative thirteen, four, and twelve. Check me. Make sure I don't make any mistakes. <coughs> Go to the corner. One times one is one. Negative four and one, negative three. Negative three and one, negative three. Negative thirteen and negative three. Negative 16. What's negative 16 and 1? Negative 16. What's 4 and negative 16? What is it? Negative 12. What's negative 12 and 1? Negative 12. What's 12 and negative 12? Zero. We like when that happens right off the bat, right? So over here on the corner, I'm going to say, ooh, x equals what? What worked? One. x equals 1. Okay, perfect. Now, what do I have left over here? Reads me my resulting polynomial. X cubed. Uh huh. Perfect. Equals. Okay, awesome. All right, I have four terms. <clears throat> what should we check to see before we jump into synthetic division again? Let's see if this groups. If it doesn't, then we gotta do synthetic division again, so let's just check. What can I take out of x cubed and x squared? X squared, I'm left with x minus 3. Can I take anything out of negative 16 and negative 12 that's going to leave me with x minus 3? No. Ugh. So what does that mean we have to do? we got to do synthetic division again. And that's okay. It 
doesn't happen a lot, but if it does, no big deal. Again, you're going to look for factors of what? 12. So plus minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And we're going to do synthetic division again. So I'm going to start with 1. And my coefficients in red are 1, negative 3, negative 16, and negative 12. So bring down your 1. What's 1 times 1? 1. Negative 3 and 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 and 1 is negative 2. What's negative 16 and negative 2? Is this going to give me 0? Okay, you can just stop. 1 doesn't work. Let's try negative 1. <clears throat> so I have 1, 3, negative 16, and negative 12. See? Good. Pay attention. Little stuff like that will mess you up. What I tell you guys, I always make mistakes on recopying things every time. All right, bring down the 1. 1 times negative 1, negative 1. Negative 3 and negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 and negative 1 is positive 4. What's negative 16 and 4? Negative 12. What's negative 12 and negative 1? 12. I get negative 12, negative 12. Negative 12, positive 12, 0. Yay. So what did you guys just prove? Okay, so x equals here, negative 1. Good. So what's my resulting polynomial here? How would I write what I have left over? x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. Do you guys want to do synthetic division again? Now, let's see if this factors. What are the factors of negative 12 that multiply to give me negative 12 but add to give me negative 4? What kind of 6? What kind of 2? Negative 6 and positive 2. Good. So my other two zeros are x equals what? 6 and x equals negative 2. Good. Now, guys, you might get to this step here. <clears throat> this is a quadratic, right? Yes? How do I know it's a quadratic? Because it's squared? What happens if you have a quadratic that doesn't factor? What do you have to do? The quadratic formula. That might happen. If you get to x squared and it doesn't break down anymore, then you might have to use the quadratic formula. All right, let's do this one. Two more. We're almost done. Practice is good for you. All right, how many answers do I have? Three. Okay. Can I factor this the way it is? No, because it's not a quadratic. We can't just break it up into two. So what are the only options I have to try for synthetic division? Plus or minus one? All right, let's try one. Let's see if one works. What are the coefficients that I'm going to write out? One, one, good, good, good. Zero, one, and one. Perfect. So bring down the one. One times one is zero and one is one times one is one plus one is two. <laughs> two times one is two and one plus two is Did that work? No. Okay, let's try negative one. So it's 1, 0, 1, 1. All right, 1 times negative 1. Negative 1. 0, negative 1. Negative 1. Negative 1 and negative 1. 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 times negative 1. Negative 2 and 1 is... Does this one work? No. Are there any rational zeros for this? No, your answer here would be no solution. And that's okay. Is that going to happen a lot? No. Yes? Didn't you tell from the beginning that there would be no solution? Yes, but you have to prove why. Like, you'd have to, you'd have to show work. But there's only two options anyway. Okay. Right, but you'd have, you, like, in order to get credit to tell me it's no solution, you'd have to show me why. Using, because it's going to say, use the rational zeros. If it was a multiple choice question, it just said, you know, here's the four answers, fine. But anytime it's not a multiple choice question, you have to have work to support. But yeah, it's good that you can recognize that. <clears throat> All right, let's look at these last ones here. All right, if you can't factor, what does it say to do? Use the quadratic formula. I'm just going to go through a couple of these. I'll work them all out <clears throat> um, before I post the video. If you guys want to work all these out and then check later, I'm not going to do all of them right now for you, so I'm going to give you some time to work on your homework. But let's look at like this first one. All right, <clears throat> how many answers should I get for this first one in the top left? Calls number one. I should get four because the highest exponent is four. 
So I can't do anything here. I can't group or anything like that because it's not going it's not gonna work. So I have to say, okay, I have to have my factors of 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. I'm gonna start with positive 1, just write out my coefficients. So I have 1, 2, negative 7, negative 8, and positive 12. So our synthetic division, we're gonna bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1, 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3, negative 7 and 3 is negative 4. Negative 4 and 1 is negative 4. Negative 8 and negative 4 is negative 12. What's 12 and negative 1? Negative 12, so then I get 0. So I, I have found, I've discovered that one of my zeros is x equals 1. Now I have a resulting polynomial. <clears throat> How can I write it out? x what? cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. Before you guys jump to synthetic division, let's just see if this will group. So I'm going to take out x squared, and I'm left with x plus 3. Agreed? All right, so then I'm going to take out a negative 4, and I'm left with x plus 3. Agreed? Okay. So I have x plus 3 one time out in front. I don't have it two times, guys. That's your new GCF. You just have it one time. And then I'm left with x squared minus 4 equals 0. Can I factor that a little bit more? Yes. Different to perfect squares. If you guys went ahead from that point and solved it, that would be fine. Just make sure when you take the square root, what is the square root of 4? Plus and minus 2. So your other zeros here are going to be x equals negative 3, x equals positive 2, and x equals negative 2. Do you guys have multiplicity here? No. What's it going to do at the x-axis at all four of those points? Is it going to bounce off or is it going to go through? It's going to go through. <clears throat> yeah, all right. That's why we're going over it. Let's do this one here. And again, I'll do them all in the video and post it. Let's do this one. Just looking at this, guys, is grouping going to work? No. But I would try. Just look at Try first, just in case. You might get one where it actually works. You don't have to do all this. But list out the factors of zero, uh, the factors of your constant, six. Account for plus and minus. So I have one. So one, two, negative five, negative six. Bring down your 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3. Negative 5 and 3 is negative 2. Is this going to work? No, you can go ahead and skip it. Try negative 1. 1, 2, negative 5, negative 6. 1 times negative 1, negative 1. 2 and negative 1, 1. 1 times negative 1, negative 1. Negative 5 and negative 6. Sorry, negative 5 and negative 1, negative 6, negative 6 and negative 1 is 6, so I have 0. What did you guys just show me? That's a factor, x equals negative 1. And then what do you have left over here? x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. Now at this point, guys, if you get to a quadratic and it factors... Awesome. If it doesn't factor, you have to use the quadratic formula. So I'm going to say, what times what? Gives me a negative 6 when I multiply, but a positive 1 when I add. Plus 3 minus 2. So what are your other two x's here? x equals what? Negative 3 and x equals 2. Good. Very good. You guys want to do one more? Yeah, let's do this last one. Let's do this one down here. We'll call this one three. This one looks difficult, but why is this one actually quite easy? There's only one in 13. There are only factors you can worry about. So plus minus one in 13. You might get one on WebAssign where the last number is 60. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six. List them all out, but you're not going to actually have to do synthetic division 27 times if you start with one. If you jump around, yeah, you might make yourself go crazy. But 
All right, coefficients. I have 1, negative 6, 22, negative 30, and 13. So bring down our 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 6 and 1 is negative 5. Negative 5 and 1 is negative 5. 22 minus 5 is mm -hmm. 17 times 1 is what's negative 30 and 17? What is it? Negative 13. What's negative 13 and 1? Well, look at that, guys. What would you just show me? X equals 1 works. So what do we have left over? X cubed minus 5X squared plus 17X minus 13. That's not going to group. So we're going to have to do synthetic division again. Again, guys, the last term is 13. So you're again with plus minus 1 and 13. I'm going to start with 1. So 1, negative 5, 17, and negative 13. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 5 and 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 and 1 is negative 4. 17 minus 4 is 13. 13 times 1 is 13. Negative 13, positive 13 is 0. What did you guys find here? <coughs> X equals 1 again. Do you have multiplicity? Yes. Two times, right? What does that mean it's going to do at the x-axis? It's going to bounce, touch and turn, however you want to say it. All right, now what we have left over is x squared minus 4x plus 13 equals 0. Factors of 13 that are going to multiply to give you 13, but add to give you negative 4, yes or no? No. no. So what do we have to do here? This is the quadratic. So you're going to have x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This is a possibility, guys. You probably will have one of these on WebAssign. You might have it on your quiz, so just make sure you guys know it. So when I look at this, I say, okay, negative b. So it's negative, negative 4, plus or minus. Can we just write off the Yep, sure. Plus or minus negative 4 squared. I'm just writing out the entire thing so everybody can see it. Minus 4 times a is 1, times c is 13, all over 2 times 1. Now we just simplify. Like Lucas just said, negative, negative 4 is just positive. So plus minus negative 4 squared is 16 minus, what's 4 times th 13? Look, 13 times 4, 52, okay. All over 2 times 1. What is 16 minus 52? Say it with some confidence. Some of you are pulling your calculators up. That's fine. 16 minus 52. Negative 36. Okay. Divided by 2. So this is 4 plus or minus. What is the square root of negative 36? 6i. Now, when you get to this point, guys, understand <clears throat> that you can simplify, but this is the same as 4 over 2 plus or minus 6i over 2. Split it up if you need to so you can see it. What is 4 divided by 2? 2 plus or minus what's 6 divided by 2? So here's your other two zeros. How many zeros in total do you have? You have four answers, right? How many of them are real? You have two reals and you have two what? Two imaginaries. How many times is this going to cross the x-axis? Two times right here at the real ones. It's not going to touch at the imaginaries. You might come out where you have four imaginaries. That just means it doesn't touch the x-axis at all. All right. Be careful. This is where you guys will make your biggest mistake is simplifying. <coughs> you guys all know how to simplify. You just got to practice it. We good? I think what I'm going to do is just post all of these answers. I'll post it into modules. I have them all worked out already. I'll just post it so you guys can check if you want to.